Hey, what's going on guys? Dan here with Backwoods Overland. Today we're gonna to be installing the Goose Gear plate system in the rear of this 2013 Toyota 4Runner. So in order to get this job done, we're only gonna need a few tools. We're just gonna need a number four hex key, some kind of pry tool to pry up the plastic trim, and a 10 millimeter socket. Now also with your plate system, you have some brackets that go in the rear of the vehicle as well as a bag of hardware. So the first thing we need to do is peel up the rear carpet as well as take out our tie downs. Hey guys, to get started, um, all we're gonna do, we're gonna start by taking this rear protective cover off. We're then gonna take our pry tool and we're gonna expose the 10 millimeter bolts that hold down your cargo hooks. Um, there's four of them, there's two here in the rear and then there's two up front. Once you take those out, um, you'll be able to remove these covers and then this whole back section here will come out um, and then we'll just pull the carpet. Now that we've removed the carpet covered protective panel um, and we've removed our cargo hooks, we're going to move on to removing these brackets. And to do so, there's just two 10 millimeter bolts that we have to take out. So next, we're just going to pull the carpet out. That should be pretty easy. There's four uh, clips here on the front and in order to get the, the plastic grommets out of the clips, you just want to pull the carpet towards you a little bit and you'll hear them snap out of there. And you get rid of the carpet, and then that leaves this styrofoam. You wanna pull the styrofoam out also. All right, so when you're doing this, you can choose what you wanna do. Um, in our setup, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down some dynamat. Um, that'll help ensure that we kill some of the sound that'll come up through the metal while we're driving. So like Nick mentioned, we went ahead and put some sound deadener down underneath of the carpet. Now we are choosing to reinstall the carpet underneath of the platform. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it is um, a good way to add a little more sound deadening to the rear of the vehicle. But something to keep in mind is when you do that, it is going to lift your platform up just a little bit. Nothing that's going to interfere with the installation, but it will raise that platform up a little bit. So the next step in our installation process is to install our brackets for the rear of the platform. Now there is a little cutout on the bracket and that cutout is going to face the front of the vehicle with the open hole towards the outside where it goes through where the tie downs went in. So like I mentioned before, the cutout in the bracket is going to face the front of the vehicle and the threaded holes on the bracket are going to go towards the inside of the vehicle. So we're just going to go ahead and lift up on this panel just a little bit, go ahead and push that bracket through and line that hole up with where it mounted up to the tie down. And we're going to do that on both the driver and the passenger side. So again, the notch is going to go towards the front of the vehicle and the threaded holes are going to go towards the inside of the vehicle. Now you'll notice that the passenger side bracket does have a little bit of a larger notch compared to the driver side. That is because we do have to kind of work this one in and around the plastic panels back here. All right, so now that we have our brackets in place, we're gonna go ahead and loosely install the tie downs back in place using the provided hardware. Now we did add some washers to those. It doesn't come with any washers, so you don't really need them, but we did add some just for some stability. <laughs>
Now, when we installed this plate into the Forerunner, we had to make sure that we ran some of the wiring that Nick had previously in the rig underneath of the plate system. Now, if you have like a bone stock Forerunner, you don't necessarily have to do that, but Nick had all kinds of wiring back here that we needed to run underneath of the plate. So now that all that's done, we can go ahead and reinstall the rear trim piece for the hatch, and then after that, we can go ahead and bolt down the platform. Now something to keep in mind when you are installing your hardware is you don't want to tighten any of it down until you get all eight of your bolts installed. That will make it a little bit easier to move the platform around to make sure everything lines up. Now something you also don't have to do but we're going to take the time to do is we're going to put some anti-seize on the bolts. It's just a personal preference thing. You don't necessarily have to do that. Now that we have all the bolts in place on the plate system, we can go ahead and tighten everything down. I'm gonna start first with the bolts that are on the tie downs from the factory, and then I'll move my way across the back and then move my way to the front, and then we'll be done. So once you've tightened down all of your hardware, that's gonna do it for the Goose Gear plate system installation on our Toyota 4Runner here in the shop. Now, if you like what you guys saw, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps us out. And stay tuned for some more awesome off-road content. All right, thanks guys, and we'll see you next time.